17, Houston, you are go for orbit. Go for orbit. Those are kind words, Robert. We're go for orbit here. After checking out the spacecraft in Earth orbit, they burned out of orbit and headed toward the moon. Houston, we're right in the middle of a snowstorm. Ron Evans, at the controls of the Command Module America, moved in to dock with the lunar module, Challenger. They pulled Challenger free of the booster's third stage, then continued the three-day coast to the moon. Even as Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt headed toward the moon, directly below the Apollo 17 control room, Flight Director Don Putty ran his crew through a launch simulation for the first Skylab. Uh, as you're probably well aware, we are still working on other programs, Skylab being the prime effort starting in the spring of, the, of uh, next year. Uh, we're also working on the uh, cooperative mission with the Russians, which will take place in 1975. And of course, we've got quite a few of uh, the flight control team as well as other center elements involved in the work on the shuttle. So. It's, it's the start of a new era, I hope. Skylab, of course, will fly in the spring of next year with three men going up and spending 28 days, and then two months later after they land, we'll put three men up for 56 days. They'll come down, and 30 days later, another three will go for 56 days. So a year of uh, 73, calendar year, will certainly be a busy one from the standpoint of manned space flight. December 10, 1972. America and Challenger went into orbit around the moon. Houston, this is America. You can breathe easier. America has arrived on station for the Challenger head. The next day, December 11th, Cernan and Schmidt entered the lunar module and undocked. You look just as pretty in Earth light as you do in uh, sunlight. Roger, uh, America. Have a good bird. With the command module in the distance, they passed over their landing place, a valley in an area of the moon called Taurus Litro. Here they hoped to find the youngest material yet sampled and direct evidence of lunar volcanoes. right down the line. Oh man, we're level with the top of the massif now. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? Pitch over it is, proceeded. And there it is, Houston, there's Camelot. Wow. Right on target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. 53 degrees. Okay, I've got far A, I've got poppy, I've got the triangle. That's 2,500 feet, 52 degrees. And H dot is good at 2,000. H dot is good. Fuel is good. Going down at 10, cut the H dot. The fuel's good. 110 feet, stand by for some dust. Little forward, G. Bend her forward a little. 90 feet. Little forward velocity, 80 feet, going down at three. Getting a little dust, going down about two. Very little dust, very little dust. Stand by for touchdown, stand by. 25 feet, down at two. Feels good, 20 feet. Going down at two, 10 feet. 10 feet, contact, 
Stop, push. Engine stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a Taurus Littrell. December 11. Cernan, then Schmidt, left the lunar module to begin their first EVA. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Littrell, we'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car in which they would drive to the exploration sites. That's beautiful. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. We thank you very much. As Cernan drove the equipment-laden rover, Schmidt carried the scientific experiments package called ALSEP. Hey, do you need me, Gene? Nope. Yep. I'm going to go deploy an ALSEP. Have at it. In Houston, scientists in the science support room watched correlating and directing their movements. Okay, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. As Schmidt set up the various experiments, Cernan drilled a series of holes, both to collect core samples and to implant experimental probes. Yeah. Oh, we're, out, we're out in the ejected blanket of camel up for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to get do. Get the jack in over here, other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. No, he's going slowly, Bill. Very slow. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. Boys, you know, that's what you call getting down into your work. Yeah, it's 29 and a half minutes from now, but remember, they left this side a little bit late. There it is. Okay. So Jim, you better make it clear to Parker that we got the pull out. On the moon and on the Earth, they were fighting time now. There are just so many hours of oxygen and water in the backpacks. So many hours of life in the vacuum of the moon. We're up in the area. Watch that cable. Cable, cable, oh. cable. Watch the cable. Cable, cable number one. You know, they're all fixed, Lee. They'll break the whole world before they'll break the cable this time. With the ALSEP functioning, they left the site for a shortened sampling traverse. Well, many parts of the ALSEP are functioning very well. The uh, heat flow experiment is working excellently. It's transmitting back temperature data the uh, cooling down is still cooling down from the uh, the drilling process and in a few hours they should be starting to get true heat flow information let's see if i can't crash the uh, corner and get that contact see if i can't get it look at the folders out there Jesus. it was time to head back to the challenger activate experiments and get back inside Man. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May. May is the month. May, that's right. May is the year of the month. As the astronauts rested, engineers in two nations were working out technical problems of the Apollo Soyuz test program, the first joint Russian and American space mission. Well, the prime purpose of the Apollo-Soyuz joint mission